And very good morning to you. This is Newsline, live as always from the News First Studios in Dawson Street in Colombo. And uh, it's another wet day out there, so you need to be uh, rather mindful when you're travelling about after the programme, of course. Uh, and this morning we've got with us a uh, veteran politician, uh, and a man who um, we could also say is, ha has been at the centre of uh, one of the greatest scandals to have engulfed this wonderful country of ours. His name is Mr. Dew Gunasekara. Very good morning to you, Mr. Dew. Morning after some time. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. But I wanted to ask you what level of frustration you are at when you consider, Mr. Dew, that you were headed the first uh, COP commission to look into what is now the infamous Bondgate scandal. And you were the first to ask for a commission. You've received all these things. Whatever you asked, you've got. But what of the problem? How frustrated are you? I had no words to express uh, really precisely, you know, what the second COP report presented by Hanun Hanunetti. Yeah. And that on the spur of moment, Prime Minister announced to the house, I was watching through the TV. Hmm. I, I refer this to AG. On that very moment, I decided myself that I should ask for a commission. Right. Knowing very well where it would end up. Hmm. It would have been gathering dust. So luckily the commission was given. And I myself went and gave evidence, and in the com through the commission, number of other things uh, revealed, and they gave a splendid report. Mm. And uh, two Supreme Court judges, yeah. I mean, wasted eleven months' time. Do you think it's a waste? Night and date, and yeah. they gave a report, yeah. and again, that has gone to AG, and is now gathering dust. That is the situation in a crust that is Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan politics. That is Sri Lanka politics. But Sri Lanka politics is, is at a, shall we call it a, polit a political crossroads. We are at crossroads. We are a deep crisis and which is not known to the people. The government never t tells the truth to the people. Yes, that's right. Because, you know, uh, they are taken for fright. Well, the gov I, I don't know when the government's been truthful at all. Um, but now then, talking about this political crisis and so on, where will your allegiances be? When I say yours, I mean the left, the so-called leftist movements. Where will you shift, take your allegiance right. and your support? You know, the, the, the economic crisis is been reflected in the political politics. Is it? Right? In politics. Yeah. It's reflected in the society. Yeah. It's reflected in the culture. Right? It's all embracing crisis. And you know, the, it's a constitutional crisis. And today, what is the solution? Uh, now we need the solution for this crisis. We are in a, almost on the verge of a dead trap. Mm. Now, now this government, no one talks about it in less publicity with the media, mm. that uh, government moved, you know, passed the uh, act called the active, res active, what do you call it? It's not responsibility act, uh, in addition to the, uh, I can't remember the, like, uh, no, whatever it is, yeah. in order to make room, to, now they are in a debt trap. They are in a debt trap. And reserve fund is almost going down. Yeah. And we're scratching at the bottom. And of the the reserve fund consists of not of earnings but of borrowings. Borrowings. Now this is a new subtle move by the new Minister of Finance. Yeah. <laughs> My good friend Mangal Zawari, clever. Yeah. Right. Clever. Right. brought in an act. Yeah. And thereby says new act in order to bring 
more loans to pay re refinance the loans and in a separate fund right and above that is above you know, without getting the approval of the parliament mm. yes you can Over and go in for new loans and got 2 million from the international market and 2 million 2 billion billion from chinese development bank now he is with four a standby arrangement new and right instead and that is not reflected there yeah in the reserve fund it's there and uh, mr mr dew um when in between all this whilst this is all happening the media have been always there trying their best to expose and to hold those in power accountable and responsible <laughs> and we've always been there and people like you who who have left the front line of politics are joining this growing force this voice to have accountability and responsibility but a colleague of ours Jamal Khashoggi was in uh well the Saudi Arabian journalist and you know he was also uh the um the voice he was an insider who turned who turned a dissident what he was trying to do was basically what all the media are trying to do everywhere else especially I think in he's a, a very forthright and upright man indeed indeed yeah, real and uh, all what i uh, gathered from the, from the media itself was that uh, uh, he was dissolution and frustrated of what is happening inside in the united saudi kingdom yes his and country he was, and his country and, and he has been uh, contributing various articles critical of uh, the kingdom and especially the crown prince yes that that of course he would have earned this wrath of the kin kingdom yeah and he had to leave the country Indeed. and uh, you know this, the way how his life ended uh, right it's a, it's a i mean crime crime i had never heard of such a crime hmm it, uh, it, it it's it's a, a, it's a grisly uh, heinous crime heinous crime um, cutting and chopping a man and when the his lover was standing outside the premises and just maybe it is it is who, uh, it is that got a man who went to the uh, in anticipation of a certificate for for his marriage indeed and, indeed. and how, um i'd like to pay but uh, i know there is i'd like to pay real tribute to jamal kashoggi and uh, i really white i did this is uh, the starting point you mark my words of the collapse of the saudi kingdom starting point do you think that is it, that that is it do the matter the various starting point and i think he will be the voice of middle east he will be honored and revered say in a matter of say decades he will emerge as a leader and jamal, and jamal kashoggi is uh, shall we say an unfortunate member of a very famous family yeah. his uh, great uh, grand uncle uh well his great grandfather was the uh, physician, physician to the King. founder of uh, modern day saudi yeah. arabia uh, ibn saud and uh, his cousin uh, well his uncle was uh, adnan kashoggi uh, the internationally well known arms dealer yeah. and <laughs> and of course his cousin was dodi al fahed and we all know what we also met with the tragic with the tragic end and there you are uh, jamal kashoggi the world stands with you and uh, we are watching to see how accountable the process will be out there in the middle east um i fear though that uh, economics uh, the economics of everything that's going on might overshadow uh what happened to uh, mr kashoggi um in sri lanka as well we have the same sort of problem so many journalists have been killed 
and there's been no proper solution at the end or no proper uh, inquiry to have closure. And the case in point, of course, is our very own uh, La Santa Vicrotunga. Uh, it's so many years since his, it's nine years now. And it, this, this government is, part of this government is the government of choice for him. And it's, it's a great pity. So uh, it's, the government is committed to unearth the whole thing. So, so the ex but like the government the completely. <coughs> but um, nothing, uh, Mr. Governor Secretary, we, we are in a uh, in, in crisis mode. Yeah. The people are being constantly told to tighten their belts. The people down, uh, down the uh, pecking order in terms of borrowings uh, at the sort of Grameen, this microfinance level, are uh, being charged huge rates of uh, interest. True, they're non collateralized, but much of these monies are going for consumption rather than for production. Right. And, uh, and we are told, like you said yourself, that the reserves, uh, the foreign reserves, consists of more, more, more borrowed money. And so this message of producing to export and so on is simply not being implemented or not being given enough prominence. Well, what do you have to say about these, these high so, rates you know, of interest? See, you know, the main feature of the crisis, yeah. number one, yeah. you know, revenue crisis. Yeah. This is something coming from gradually, you know, from 1978 onwards. Yeah. Right. You know, to, I have repeated this, uh, I think, uh, on these, these discussions, that when Mrs. Bandarnag handed over trains to Jaya Javadana, yes. right, our revenue was 24% of the GDP. Yeah. It came tumbling down, and today it stands between 11 and 12 percent, from 24 percent. And that revenue is not sufficient to meet the expenditure for salaries of public servants, pensions and day-to-day -day expenses. Mm. So therefore, the need arises for borrowings, one thing. Yeah. Then, this government, particularly the last three and a half years, much is expected of them. Yeah. Saying that when the Raleigh Vikram Singh as a neoliberal economic leader comes, there will be inflow of capital from the West. Mm. Now today, after three and a half years, more outflow than inflows. So no FDI for development. Only horror FDIs. Right. Then the other thing is uh, the, our exports, foreign remittances, not sufficient to meet our imports. You know, our e imports are almost double the amount value of the exports. So these are the crises. And we have no savings only. Our savings stand at 22%, one of the lowest in the world. The chi China, the miracle is, their savings is 50 to 60%. They, are, they didn't go to any other country to, for borrowings. They built on their own resources. The, the, the money is actually flowing all right, but it's flowing into their pockets. Corruption is at an all-time high. So the, the other thing is, Jaya Javadana anticipated that with the, the new taxation policy, yeah. there would be accumulation of capital in the economy. So this is the 40th year. There had not been accumulation of capital. And we are, it's a case of borrowing, borrowing under all administrations. We continue to borrow, and today we are at a debt trap. So, not only this government, not only the previous government, all administration. So, it's a question of policy. The main is the policy. Unless you identify that policy, you will never find a solution. No one, and this, this question has not come to the surface. I mean, you have to look at the whole thing from the political economy, not, the, not mere economic. That is why we are, most of our economists are silent because they are, they are neighbor, neoliberal economists. They don't look at from the from the people's point of view. Yeah. That is the whole trouble. 
what about the the what about the um, level of investment in and I choose that word carefully the level of investment in education what what do you have to say about that so there is no revenue where there is just <laughs> if there is no not only that is why why, is that, a, why can't it's a borrow? big scale you know the private education has been privatized in a yeah. in a grand scale and at an accelerated rate yeah similarly in the health sector right are you aware in a, say you know in a decades time we are we are going to we are heading a very big crisis the aged people's crisis already is about 13% over 60 years right how to spend at home mm. for for 30 years without any support from either the children or from the government or anyone how to you think of yourself yeah. so you retire at the age of 60 you die at 100 years now today <laughs> at 90 30 years to remain at home i mean the government should look after that this is the welfare of the people so health care is a new sphere new sector which is But coming the, the the people at law basically the people have been forgotten as we've discovered on our um, government the programs when we've traveled into all these areas we've found that there are there is a real section of our population who have in essence been forgotten they are the forgotten people of our country the forgotten people really comes from their you know the informal economy you know you have the formal economy so yeah. the public servants you got about 1.4 million public servants yeah that uh, nearly 14% of the working population yeah then you get the private sector and i like you who belong to the organized private sector not about 26% mm-hmm. the balance 60% belong to rather informal economy the man who owns quarter acre half an acre mm-hmm. one acre one and a half acre the three wheeler driver the a payment talker the man who, who is in the tea kiosk or employed in a shop and these are the people they are they have no bargaining power they have no purchasing power but they have people like they us. no one to look after them also but they have news first ah. we they have us yeah news to, first to okay. they have us to be their voice because that's what we do so that is the reason why the main fundamental reason i am i want to stress that late mr vandar nayak when he came to power i have greatest regard for him first thing that he did was to set up planning ministry and planning commission to direct the economy so and what, that was removed by jaya jaya what, what's, what's it, yeah today and dr gamani korea was brought in as yeah. intellectual and he did today no one knows what is happening the entire comprehensive picture of the economy no one knows what's the point the ministry of national policy planning oh uh, that is right. the, they they had the central bank and they robbed it so what's the point that's that that's the planning that went into it yeah, on, on the part of mr vikram singh yeah, no, now no. the the messages are coming thick and fast thank you very much Zero double seven two three hundred three zero five by SMS only, please. Kindly don't phone that number now. Um, here's one: La Santa's murder was as heinous and going by what MS has said about the UNP is no longer what it was in DS and Dudley's <laughs> time. Maybe that's how it all can be changed. All politicians have to be educated, well spoken, and be setting examples. They should have an austerity drive. starting with them no fancy cars no overseas trips no tamashas at all show the people you care first tell the truth to the people first in the first instance otherwise people will not care right? they won't care <laughs> well there you are that that's all uh, oh, another one also all politicians over 65 should be state elders and leave it for the younger people to come in who are educated enough and uh how his his an interesting point whilst we do respect jr and his policy policies but his policies was implemented by the uneducated ranasinga premadasa 
<laughs> chased India out and set a growth pattern for the island. Remember all those yeah. wonderful uh, programs he had, yeah. like the, um, the, the factories, you know, the garment factories. Those are all wonderful things. That was what, that was in essence, what a development bank did. There's no, there had not been no industrialization for the last 40 years. Agriculture collapsed, completely collapsed. It's only 8% of the GDP. Agricultural country. So, in all this, Mr. Diogunas Sekra, what are we going to do? Are we just going to be, is it going to be like the bond? You know, you, you, you had the COPE, then you had a number two COPE, um, you wanted a presidential commission, and uh, you had all the support that you um, could have from uh, us. We, we drove this forward and took it. And now it's up there. And is that it? Is that it? Are you happy? I'm happy on this, to this section. I'm the person who on the 50th day of the Habar government, I opened the can of worms. Yes, the, the 50th corruption, day. Corruption. Yes, but if, what I'm if saying I, is... If I had not done it, today no unknown would have noticed Corruption would have gone and, uh, until the whole country is in. Uh, now at least the people are alive. Pe people are on the alert. So, but I, I, is that it? Are you going to just accept it? It's it's reached there at that level. So needs we must have an alternative program. I think. Don't you think time. that it's about time that the Attorney General's Department stop playing politics and actually started prosecuting these people involved in the greatest scam ever. Yeah. Do you, do you, would you call on that on the Attorney General to get his act together? How we have been telling over no one if the President says, if the Parliament says and no one, no one takes heed of it. He doesn't, I don't know what has happened there. Well we have a new Chief Justice who says personal favours are not encouraged in my office. And hardship caused to the poor by dragging of cases has always bothered our new Chief Justice. Hopefully, he may be the catalyst. Uh, otherwise, what will happen is that the people will have to lynch people like R.W., Malik, Akila, Mangala, and Sagala. I won't repeat the last line of what this viewer has sent me. It is one word to describe that whole bunch. What? A bunch of something. I'll let you, your imagination run right. Yeah. But they should all, basically, you know, uh, but to this list also, we need to add, we need to add Kabir Hashim. Because it, we had the trio, Kabir Hashim, and uh, Manik Samara Vikrama, and uh, Ranil Vikrama Singer, who are not being held accountable for this greatest fraud. They, they seem to be getting away with it. Wait for the polls to come along and let's see what happens to them there. But it's sad, isn't it? Sad. You're 80 plus. <laughs> what will make you happy? I, uh, we have done our part of the job. It's not enough, is it? It's not enough, is it? We want where is the accountability? Yeah, no, I, I say, need, what is needed is a new alignment of social forces. Which is why my original question, I where know. will the, the left is I'm this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. We'll have to move in to, to bring about a new alignment of social forces. Right. Today the whole economy is run by whom? A bunch of finance capital. A bunch. Yes. Right. It's not the cabinet. It's not the parliament. Right? You just ponder over. Indeed. They are, without that bunch, no, yes. our two major parties can't do anything. And they rule the country. They rule the economy. Finance capital bunch. I don't mention the name. I don't know. I don't want to mention the name. I am still thinking about what, what you said, that the death, the grisly murder of Jamal Khashoggi will be the catalyst for 
real change in that troubled region and in the kingdom. Even in death, Jamal Khashoggi has shown, highlighted the problems that are being faced by his country. The whole world, the global lies, the neoliberalism, neoliberalism has gone to crisis, the whole world. And here we also, last 40 years, we have also gone into crisis. It's high time we rethink the whole thing. That's why I say a new alternative program is necessary. New alignment of social forces is necessary, right? Do that you, only can bring about some sanity to the political spectrum. Lasanta Los, Vikramatunga died in the pursuit of the truth. Do you think, Mr. Dugunasekara, that Lasanta has lost his life in vain? Has it made an iota of difference to governance in this country? The departure of procedures are robust, alive and well. At every juncture there is a departure of process and procedure. No, I mean, here the, the economy breeds all these things. The economy breeds all And they these lie. Things. They lie through their teeth. The Prime Minister on the 30th of March said, at the sent a memo to all these all his ministers that as a matter of policy unsolicited bids should not be accepted it is the same man who awarded the same chinese company that he accused of being 90 percent corrupt an unsolicited transaction to build part of the highway he the same prime minister told us back then that because of uh, their Vigilance, they had saved 30 billion from some highway project. Complete and utter rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Because I want to know from the Treasury Secretary where that 30 billion is. Because you know what, Mr. Dew? There was no such thing. He just changed the scope of the contract. A very big road became a rather small one. A very high viaduct became a rather small shorter one naturally the value comes and down. obviously the price has come down this is this is there is no you don't need brains for this and then they present it as though they've done some magic well i hope you've captured that because uh, that that's a good say <laughs> But it's completely frustrating that such people are still hanging on, clinging on to... Um, <clears throat> but there's one thing, Mr. Dew going to say, that I think the two of us can agree, and your agreement is essential, that in between all this corruption, we've been, we, our, our media network, has been at the forefront of holding those responsible accountable without any consideration for the consequences of those actions. Yeah, I admire that. We've been up there and I want to pay tribute to all my colleagues here who day in and day out do just that. They hold them accountable. I, like Jamal. Like Jamal. <laughs> we'll end up on the, on the note of Jamal Khashoggi, shall we? Jamal Khashoggi, the world stands with you. And we do hope that Mr. Gunasekhar's Symbol uh, of journalism. You know, that yes, he was life. a symbol of journalism. It would be nice to end up yeah. with yeah. his photograph on the screen. Dear Gunasekhar, thank you very much for being uh, on Newsline. We appreciate that. And there we go. We'll end up with Jamal Khashoggi. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Do take care. And God bless you all. Thank you. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali.